Why? Why? If you Why? have T-Mobile 5G home internet, you might be hearing this Why? a lot. Why? Every time your internet slows down during the busiest hours. Why? Why? Because your network gives priority to cell phone users. Why? Why? Good question. Why not switch to Cox Internet with two times faster download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet during peak hours? Okay. Stop the whys and visit cox.com slash 5G home for details. T-Mobile prioritizes certain T-Mobile phone users over home internet users during times of congestion. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Now, Frank Sinatra, transcribed as Rocky Fortune. NBC presents Frank Sinatra, starring as that footloose and fancy-free young gentleman, Rocky Fortune. Did I ever tell you about the time I got mixed up in a plot to murder Santa Claus? Yeah. It all started when I answered a Christmas ad for a department store. The ad said, young man of good character is auxiliary store detective and other duties. Two-week employment. So, next day, I am an auxiliary shamus for Crack and Bomb's department store. Kind of a high-class Fifth Avenue dispensary where for only 50 bucks you can buy your girl a mink toothbrush. And for an extra five grand, you can get her a coat to match. Uh, this way, Mr. Uh... Fortune, uh, Rocky Fortune, Mr. Prim. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is Fifth Floor, Children's Toys. Note, please, uh, Santa's workshop and the enchanted igloo. This will be your post. What do I do? Just keep an eye on the merchandise. Quackenbaums has had a good deal of shoplifting recently. Yeah, especially in the jewelry department, eh? Uh, we uh, don't like to talk about that, Mr. Fortune. Mister, it's been on the front page of all the newspapers for a week. 8,000 bucks worth of pearls. Wow. The thief will be apprehended in good time. Have no fear. Uh, well, I must get back to my office. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Prim. Yes? What happens if I see a gun of... A what? A lifter, a thief. Apprehend the criminal with the merchandise and bring both to my office behind the elevators. The name Lysander Prim is on the door. Check. Oh, and uh, one other thing. Yeah? At lunch hour, you will relieve Santa Claus. You mean put on a beard and everything? Oh, it's just for half an hour. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you start in exactly five minutes. Um, I'm not exactly built for this. Neither is our present Santa. They're running thin this year. Uh, just ask Big Elf to help stuff you. Big Elf? Santa's helper. The large fellow in the elf suit. Oh, sure. Good luck, Mr. Fortune. The honor of Quackenbaums is in your hands. Hmm. At forty-four fifty a week, Mr. Quackenbaum is getting a bargain. Big Elf, whose name is Marty, weighs about 250. He helps me in a Santa suit, and I take over inside the magic igloo while Santa goes out for some chowder. I embarrass a couple of mothers by promising everything the kids ask for, and I'm really living it up, having the time of my life when a little girl about six comes in all by herself. She's a pretty little thing, too, with blue eyes and freckles. On one leg is a light steel brace. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all, and that's what I want for Christmas. Well, hello, honey. You here all alone? Yes, sir. Well, what can I do for you? I have a note for you. A letter for old Santa, huh? Ho, ho, let's have a look. Dear Santa, you know what we want for Christmas? We better get it or you'll never live to make those Christmas Eve deliveries. Find you know who. Well, well, did you write this letter yourself, honey? No, sir. A man gave it to me. What did he look like? A big man with a black mustache. He gave me a nickel, too. Heavy spender, huh? Honey, what's your name? Gail. Gail Grayson. And what would you like Santa to bring you for Christmas, Gail? I'd like your elf. You mean big bonehead out there? Oh, no. Not the man in the elf suit. I mean the elf doll. The one with the red silk suit and the green hat. 
Oh, well, that's pretty expensive, honey. Maybe your mommy and daddy can't afford it. We don't have any mommy and daddy. Oh. Well, you leave your name and address with Santa, and I'll see if we can't arrange for something. It might not be that same doll, but... That's the one I want. Yeah, I can see that. Well, look, gal. Gail? Gail, pick... oh, there you are. I told you to wait outside the man's office. I wanted to talk to Santa about getting that elf doll. Honey, I told you that doll cost too much. Santa says maybe he can arrange something. Santa's wrong. Look, mister, I've just been seeing about a man about trying to get a job in this place so we can afford to eat. I don't have money for expensive dolls. Well, I'm sorry, miss. I just... Well, you've no business building up false hopes in children. They put so much faith in this. Well, if you just let me explain, I... Come around and explain Christmas Eve if you can. Well, I'd like to, but I don't even know your name. This is my sister, Laura. And we live at 65 Bleakman Street. Five flights up Santa... Gail, for heaven's sake. Come along. You won't forget the doll, will you, Santa? Please, please don't forget. Please. Lose a customer, Jack? I'm afraid I lost a friend, too. Uh, cheer up. Maybe you won't live long, then you won't need a friend. Why don't you just stick to being a big elf, huh, Marty? Don't be a wise guy, Fortune. Me? I'm never a smart aleck. By the way, how do they spell elf? O-A-F? After lunch, the real make-believe Santa Claus comes back, and I turn over the suit, beard, and stuffing. I'm glad to get back to being a store detective. That big elf has no pleasure to work with. I keep thinking of little Gail. Well, let's face it, I keep thinking of her big sister, who's got eyes like Dresden China and a figure like a Lamage teapot. I wonder if I'm ever going to see her again. I don't have to wonder long, because right away things begin to happen. Help! Don't be Catch her! Catch her! All right, ho- hold it, hold it. Oh, let me go. Let take me... it easy, take it easy. Well, Laura Grayson. Who are you? Santa Claus, remember? My name is Rocky Fortune. I'm also the store dick in this department. Oh, Mr. Fortune, please. I, I don't know why. I, I took it. I... Well, let's see what we've got here. It's the elf doll. The one Gail wanted. Oh, baby, if you're going to shoplift the doll, they got better ways worked out than just pick it up and run with it. I had to take it. I, I couldn't disappoint her. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I guess it was partly my fault. Well, I suppose you'll turn me over to the police now. Well, hold it, hold it. Lady, this ain't for general publication. But between you and me, I'm the world's worst toy store detective. Too much larceny in my blood. So I'll just turn around for 20 or 30 minutes, and if you're not gone when I turn back, I'm going to put the pinch on you. You're letting me go? Please, let's not be vulgar. Well, thank you, Rocky. Hey. What? You forgot the doll. But... I was going to buy it for her anyway. Besides, I get it for only three bucks because it's a display model. Now beat it. Oh, Rocky, I could kiss you. Go ahead. I will. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year to you. Wow. The kid slips down the stairway with the elf doll, and I am still wearing a lipstick on my cheek when Mr. Prim boils over. He looks so much like a clothing store dummy, you expect to find a price tag on him. Right behind him is Marty, the big oaf elf. Mr. Fortune. Oh, hi. Where is she? Where is who? Uh, whom? A uh, he. The dame who stole the doll from Santa's workshop. Oh, you are a little elf, aren't you? Mr. Marty here tells me he saw you catch her. Where is she? Overpowered me. She must be a lady wrestler or something. Mr. Fortune. Tell you what, though, Mr. Prim, just to make everything okay, I'll pay for the doll. What? No kidding. You see, I know the young lady, and I was going to buy it for her anyway, so I... Well, thought... this is highly irregular. Oh, come on, Mr. Prim. Think of how proud Mr. Quackenbaum will be when you tell him you unloaded that shop-worn display model. Huh? Well, well, it's highly irregular, but uh, go ahead. Uh, the sales clerk will make out the proper form. Well, thanks, Mr. Prim. I'll do that. Hey, Fortune. Yeah. What was the dame's name? What's it to you? Just curious, you know. I know. Stay just as you are. After closing time, I go into the employee's dressing room for a quick wash-up and a change of linen. Place empties out when my pal, the store Santa, slaps in after a hard day at the igloo. He takes off his red suit, and I see he's built like a Japanese wrestler with a nose like Rudolph the reindeer, only it ain't from drinking melted snow. Well, good night, everybody. Uh, good night, Herm. Uh, Looks as if the detectives and the Santa Clauses are the late workers in this department, huh? Yeah, just you and me now. Just you, Santa. I'm blowing right now. Just a minute. Yeah? That girl who stole the elf star. What about her? Mr. Prim mentioned that you know her. So, I'd like to know her name. You're the second guy in a half an hour. What is this? Just what I said, Fortune. 
What's her name and where does she live? Look, I know you've been making a list and checking it twice, Uncle, but just what do you want to, why do you want to know? I, I had my hand that elf doll myself for my kid. I'd like to get it for her. They got brand new ones in stock. I'm interested in that one. So the name, huh? Sorry, Uncle. Fortune. Maybe I don't make myself clear. I want that girl's name and address. I want it very bad. You know you shouldn't use that tone of voice. You don't sound like you got the holiday spirit. I'm going to use more than a tone of voice if you don't unclaim. Sorry, Sam. Okay, fortune. Ooh. Okay, Bob. <coughs> you want to fight? <coughs> What's her name? Why, you pumped up just your... Gentlemen, <coughs> gentlemen, please, please, just what is going on here? Well, let Samson here tell you. Uh, uh, I was just showing Mr. Fortune here a couple of judo holes that might come in handy next time a young girl overpowers. This is not a gymnasium, gentlemen. I'll thank you to leave and report back promptly tomorrow morning. Good evening. I managed to stagger out of my own power and head back to my flat. I figure I'll have some supper and then locate Laura Grayson for another look at that elf doll that everybody wants to get his hands on. Also, for another look at Laura Grayson. Yeah. I stopped to line my flu at a local cafeteria and go up to the flat. I walk in like I live there, which I do, and discover I have guests. Hello, Rocky. Well, well, Sergeant Hamilton J. Finger. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake with poison in it. A cake with a file in it would be more useful where you're going, Rocky, my old pal. You are referring to the House of Detention? The same. Well, sir, if my days as a process server serve me correctly, they make mention of a thing titled due process, which means you don't arrest a guy without you can make some kind of charge, right? Right. So? So we would like to revolve the wheel of our conversation around the axle of your understanding down at the Irish clubhouse. Concerning? Concerning a murder. You said a murder? Yeah. Who? Rocky. This is going to come as a shock to a naive young boy like yourself. But there ain't no Santa Claus. How come? How come? Because somebody stuck a knife in him. He's laying on his face over in Quackenbaum's department store. Let's go. I spent the next few hours as a guest of the city in the squad room or sweat box, as it is affectionately remembered by inmates of various steel academies in this state. And mine host, the Sergeant Finger. All right! Now for the last time. You had an argument with him, right? He had one with me. Okay. He socked you. Yes. You socked him. Right. You got interrupted. Right. You left. Right. Then you come back and stabbed him. Wrong. Okay, okay. Let's have your story. Somebody was after him, Sarge. I got a threatening note that was supposed to go to him. Where is it? Here. Ah, this is kid stuff. You ever hear of a kid threatening Santa Claus? Come on, Sarge. Okay, okay, so it ain't kid stuff. Who sent it and why? That's what the taxpayers hire you to figure out. Maybe it's got some connection with a jewel robbery. What do you know about the jewel robbery? Just what I read in the papers. Somebody snatched eight grand worth of pearls. You, maybe? Don't be ridiculous. I wasn't even working there when it happened. What makes you think it was an inside job? The newspapers. They got the opinion from the police. You familiar with this organization? Don't get funny. Did it ever occur to you that maybe Santa Claus was in on that jewel job? As a matter of fact, Rocky, the guy in that Santa Claus suit has a record as long as your arm. Only one thing is wrong. Yeah? We can't arrest him for his own murder. So why pin it on me? You're available. Also, whoever stabbed him was in on the inside. It happened after the store closed. Also, there's eight grand worth of pearls floating around someplace and a reward for a thousand to whoever finds them. No kidding. Yeah, you want to claim it? All you have to do is confess you killed a guy, turn in the pearls, collect the reward... And go to the chair. I'll tell you what, Sarge. You do me a favor and I'll confess to the murder. The jewel robbery and all of the other old crimes you're too stupid to solve. What's the favor? Drop dead. Rocky, someday, pow! Right in the toy department. Come on, Finger. You know as well as I do I couldn't have done it. What makes you think so? That note the lieutenant handed you a few minutes ago. You checked my alibi and I was feeding my face in a cafeteria when he got stabbed. So stop giving me the needle and let me go home. Fortune, someday... I know. Pow! Can I go now? Don't you like it here? <laughs> it's great, but I got a date with a doll. <laughs> Rocky, 
Finger turns me loose, and I jockey my way right down to Laura Grayson's apartment in the cheap village flat. It's about 9 p.m. when I get my finger in the doorbell. Just a moment. Rocky. Hi. Can I come in a minute? Of course. Uh, where is uh, Gail? Sleep. I hope so, anyway. Uh, listen, uh, honey, I I have to ask you something. Well? Have you got the, the doll? Of course. Gail's so happy about it, she's ready to fly. Uh, look, I, I, I'll have to ask you for it back. You what? Well, I'll, I'll get another one to replace it. A brand new one, really. But but right now, i got to have that one. Sure, Rocky. Sure. It, it, it sounds kind of funny, but and I can't explain it now, but you tell a kid I'll get her another one, huh? It isn't necessary, Rocky. Wait a minute, I'll get it for you. Here. Well, thanks. Um, I have to get back to the store. I'll call you tomorrow, maybe for dinner, huh? Uh-huh. Good night, Laura. Good night, Rocky. I knew what she was thinking, so I didn't try to make any excuses. I just took the doll and headed back to my flat to take a look inside it was as empty as an eggshell in a fox farm. I was just reaching for the phone when it rang. Hello. Rocky? Yeah. But this is Laura. Rocky, something terrible has happened. What's wrong? What's the matter? Well, just after you left, a man came, a big man with a black mustache, and he asked for the doll. He said he was from the department store police. I told him you'd taken it back to the store, and he left. Well, what's so terrible? Well, he must have awakened Gail, and she overheard it. Anyway, when I went into her room just now, she was gone. Rocky, I don't know what to do. She heard you say I was taking a doll to the store? Yes. Maybe she's on her way over there now to try to get the doll back. At this hour? Honey, six-year-old kids don't know from the wages and hours law. Look, I'll take a run over there just in case she shows up. You notify the police and meet me. I stuff the kids down in my overcoat pocket and flag a cab over to Quack and Bond's department store. There's no sign of the kid out front, so I leg it around to the delivery entrance. No sign. I decide to check inside and show my pass to the night watchman at the entrance. Uh, hold it, mister. Hiya, Pop. I, I work here. Uh, let's see your card. Yeah, right here. Yeah, store dick, huh? That's right, Pop. Now, listen, I'm looking for a little girl about seven years old. Wears a brace on one foot. You seen her? Uh, what would a kid like that be doing here after hours? Uh, her mother thinks she got lost in the store. Oh, well, I've I only been on a couple of minutes. I ain't seen her. I'm going up to check the toy department on 5. You keep an eye out, will you? If she comes along, send her up to 5. I'll be waiting. Okay. I'll keep watch, fair. Thanks. I go up to the toy department. In the darkness, it looks as eerie as a graveyard on Halloween. I figure maybe Gail managed to slip in past the watchman, so I give a yell. Gail! I want to scare myself to death. What's that? Nobody here but us toys, boss. Get him up, Fortune. Uh, I assume that ain't a lollipop stick in my spine. That's right, smart boy. Step over here in the light. So what do I owe the pleasure? Just a little shopping trip. I'm looking for a doll. You don't say. I do. So hand it over. Help yourself. It's in the coat pocket. Toss it here. There. Now stand still while I have a look inside. Okay, wise guy, where's the stuff? Stuff? Don't play dumb. It was eight grand worth of pearls from last week's job inside this doll. Where are they? Search me, pal. Maybe you got the wrong doll. I got the right doll, Buster. What makes you so sure? Santa Claus told me. Before he died. Looks like you and Santa Claus were in on that robbery. Yeah, that's what I thought. Until he tried to double-cross me. What happened? I heisted this stuff and gave it to Santa Claus to hide. He hid it so good I couldn't find it. He wasn't going to tell me where it was until I gave him more than half. Only I changed his mind for him. Yeah, with a four-inch blade. Uh-huh. Hey, you should be a store detective. You're real smart. I take it the stuff was in the doll. That's right, Rocky. Only it ain't there now. And you had that doll. Which means... Unless you unclam, I may have to give you the same treatment I gave Santa Claus. I'm telling you, the pearls were gone when I got that doll home. And I'm telling you, if they were gone, it's because you took them. I don't have them. Sue me. Rocky, old man, 
It's Christmas time and goodwill to men and all that. And I hate to knock off two guys in the same day. But if you don't spill them pearls in five seconds, I'm going to put lead in your braid. Now, where are they? I don't know. One, two, three, four. Okay. What the... Gail, hi. I'm back here, Fortune. Here's a football for Christmas, boy. <laughs> I let Big Elf have it in the puss with a football from the toy counter and grab the kid. We duck into the maze of counters and crawl along until we get behind some packing crates. Marty's cursing and looking for us, and he's still got a gun, too. Rocky, I, I had to find you alone. Shh. Don't let him hear us. Crawl into this packing case. Rocky, I'm scared. Do as I say. Okay, Rocky. Fortune! It's no use, Fortune. I'm going to find you, and when I do... Come on out, Fortune! Come on out! Rocky, I'm scared. So am I, kid. We got to do something. But let's see what they got in these boxes. Mighty Mike Mechanical Police Car. Oh, there's a big help. Hey! What? Let me have one of those. Here. What are you going to do, Rocky? You'll see. I'm coming, Fortune. Look out, Marty. Watch out. That's two shots. He's got a revolver that holds six. Four to go. Let's see now. There's something, Rocky. Super rocket ship. Fine. Let's try this on. Ready? Go. Fortune, are you crazy? I'm going to get you. Three and two or five. One more. What's in that box? It's a atomic blaster. Turn your space cadet side. Why not? Let's try it. I hear you, Fortune. I hear you now. Try this, Clark. <laughs> you missed, Marty. That's pretty bad shooting. Maybe, punk, but this ain't gonna be. What the... Those things gotta be loaded before you can shoot them, Marty, remember? You dirty... Here's something else for Christmas. Oh! The Santa's helper was a Louisville slugger right on top of the noggin. And just as he went out, the lights went on. And suddenly the place is crawling with humanity. Rocky, Gail, are you all right? We're fine, baby. Well, look who's here, late as usual. No wisecracks. Is this the missing kid lady? Yes, officer, thank you. Who's the stiff? This is the bum who killed Santa Claus. Boy, you should have seen Rocky beat him with that bat. By the way, Gail, where's the stuff that was inside the doll? You mean the pretty marbles? I thought they came inside the doll, Rocky. It was a sort of surprise. Some surprise. Do you have them? I think so. In my pocket someplace. Oh, here they are. Sergeant? Uh, here you are, sir. Just in case you ain't got all your marbles. Marbles? Hey, those are the pearls that were heisted last week. He's got a magnificent mind, this Sergeant Finger, doesn't he? Gail, I'm sorry about the doll, honey, but unless I'm mistaken, you've got about a $1,000 reward coming for this stuff. $1,000? Rocky, too good to be true. I must be dreaming. Want me to pinch you? Couldn't you just kiss me instead? Why not? Yeah. Hmm. Merry Christmas. Hmm. Happy New Year. Yeah. NBC has presented Frank Sinatra as that footloose and fancy-free young gentleman, Rocky Fortune. Others in tonight's cast included Ted Von Elts, Mary McGovern, Kay Stewart, Frank Gerstle, Jim Nusser, Barney Phillips, Bill Justine. Tonight's script was written by George Lefferts. Andrew C. Love directed. And now to tell you about next week's adventure, here's Frank Sinatra as Rocky Fortune. Next week I managed to get involved in a fixed fight. Some gamblers want me to stay down for the long count. From here to eternity. Tune in and I'll tell you all about it. Till then, I'll see you around. Visit with Fibber McGee and Molly tonight on the NBC Radio Network. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. Chumba. 
Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.